One day, I asked my dad what specific denomination of Presbyterianism our church, Tongbu Tanglo Kyoe, also known as Eastern Presbyterian Church, was. He told me that we were Tehan Yesugyo Tanglo E Chonge, the Presbyterian Church of Korea. I then asked one of the Bible school teachers, and he told me that we were a Korean Presbyterian Church abroad. Then I asked a deacon, and he told me that the English ministry pastor is of the Bible Presbyterian Church. And definitely not part of the Presbyterian Church USA. I told him that he did not really answer my question as to what denomination our church is affiliated with. He then told me that I should really ask our head pastor. I guess no one really knew the answer for sure. So I went and asked my head pastor, Pastor Lee Yong Kyu. He then told me that we are not tied to any specific Presbyterian denomination. We are simply Presbyterians. Christians who learn from and are tied to the Bible. Denomination is not important. The Bible is. I understood what my pastor was saying. I understood that he did not want to tie down the church and limit the congregation to a single denomination. But I also knew that he viewed me as a child who was still learning about God and the social interpretations of Christianity. So he did not want to taint my mind by telling me of all the possible denominations that I might fall prey to. Instead of solely depending on God and the Word of God, still I wanted to know what was going on because too many people gave me too many different answers. I was curious, and so I started my research with the general term Presbyterianism, and this is what I found out. Presbyterianism is a branch of Protestant Christianity that follows John Calvin's and John Knox's theological tradition. Presbyterianism distinguishes itself from other denominations mainly by doctrine, institutional organization, and worship. Presbyterian theology usually includes doctrines common to most Christian religions, such as the Trinity, which is God in three persons, and Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross and his resurrection. Also emphasized is the sovereignty of God, the authority of the Scriptures, the necessity of grace through faith in Christ. And a strict keeping of the Sabbath day, amongst others. Institutional organization is distinguished through the Presbyterian polity, a method of church governance set forth by the Westminster Assembly as a rejection to the governances by hierarchies of a single bishop. Each local congregation is governed by a session consisting of pastors and presbyters, also known as elders, who are specific to Presbyterianism. Usually, the head pastor is also the moderator. According to Samuel Miller, there are three classes of officers within the congregation: the teaching elder, the ruling elders, and the deacons. Teaching elders, also known as ministers of word and sacrament or pastors, teach the word and doctrine and dispense the sacraments. The ruling elders are chosen, elected, or appointed among and by the congregation, and then ordained. They assist in the inspection and government of the church, prays for the congregation, is of service to them, and encourages their faith. The deacon's position varies due to the different meanings in Presbyterian churches. Some are responsible for the finance and fabric of the church with or without the elders, while others manage whatever relates to the temporal support of the gospel and its ministers. On a larger scale. Groups of local churches are governed by a higher assembly of elders known as a presbytery, and presbyteries can be grouped into a synod. Synods and presbyteries can be also joined nationwide to create a general assembly. As for the worship, a minimalist conception of worship is followed. This means that the regulative principle of worship is the standard. The regulative principle of worship pretty much states that what is not commanded is forbidden. It is the view that God has placed in the Scriptures what He requires for worship, and that everything else is prohibited. Musical instruments are associated with worldly icons and thus not used in worship. Exclusive psalmody is advocated in worship as well. However, in many churches today, despite all the protests, use hymns and musical instruments. Sometimes they even employ contemporary worship music styles like worship bands. Just like how worship has changed over time, Presbyterianism too has changed since the Calvinist days in the United States. Due to social changes, liberalism, and the dispute between the modernists and the fundamentalists, Presbyterianism had to adapt and change by splitting into specific denominations. 
many denominations rose from the main branch of Presbyterianism. Throughout history and even continuing on today, there are many splits and mergers among the different denominations. One example is the Presbyterian Church in the United States of America, created in 1789. In 1936, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, also known as OPC, separated from the Presbyterian Church in the United States of America because of the issues of theological liberalism and the charismatic movement. Liberalism questioned the full authority of the Bible and denied biblical doctrines that modern secular thinking found disagreeable. In 1937, the Bible Presbyterian Church, also known as BPC, separated from the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, OPC. The former, BPC, is more conservative and evangelical. She is fundamentalist in nature, relying on the truth and faith of Christ and emphasizing the Bible. OPC holds a more classic, biblically reformed character and faith where traditional modes of worship and piety are kept. Mission work, both from home and abroad, are emphasized. Two main issues led to the split between OPC and BPC. First was the issue of reformed piety versus fundamental piety. It essentially dealt with the consumption of alcoholic beverages. OPC condemned drunkenness but did not abstain from alcohol, while BPC prohibited the consumption of alcohol completely. Second was the use of the Schofield Reference Bible and its issue of faithfulness to covenant theology versus the toleration of dispensationalism. OPC was against the dispensational form of premillennialism in the Schofield Reference Bible, while BPC tolerated and wanted the freedom to use the Reference Bible. Despite the disagreements, the split was on kind terms, unlike the splits of other denominations. Both denominations today are on the smaller size. On the other hand, the largest Presbyterian denomination in the United States is the Presbyterian Church USA, also known as PCUSA, created in 1983. PCUSA is generally more progressive and liberal on matters like doctrines, environmental issues, sexual morality, and economic issues more than OPC and BPC. Two big differences between PCUSA and OPC and BPC that are more well known today are the issues of the ordination of women and homosexuality. PCUSA is more willing to ordain women than some Presbyterian denominations who interpret the Bible strictly and directly. Although there is debate amongst the members, PCUSA are more liberal with the idea of homosexuality. Presently, gay and lesbian persons are welcome to become members of the church as well as serve in leadership positions such as ministers, deacons, elders, and trustees within the church. Besides the issues of the ordination of women and the acceptance of homosexuality, there are also theological differences that have separated PCUSA and the more conservative denominations. In general, what I found out was that my church, Tongbujanglo Kyoe, Eastern Presbyterian Church really does not have an affiliation to a single denomination. Although my congregation is predominantly Korean, we do not truly follow the Presbyterian denominations in South Korea, nor are we strictly part of the Reformed Presbyterian denominations of the United States. I do know that my church is not like the liberal Protestant denomination of PCUSA, but is more like the Orthodox and Bible Presbyterian Church denominations. What I know for sure is that my church emphasizes the conservative faith in a denomination that has become more liberal over the years. What I realize is important to me is that I practice a conservative faith in Presbyterianism that relies on the Bible for truth. What I really need to know is not my church's specific denomination, but rather the teachings of my church. It is to always have faith in Christ and to believe in the Bible both a blessing God has provided us with daily. Thank you.